Welcome back to the WVIZ PBS Big Picture Show. My name is Tom Pasco, and soon we will present, as the second of our trio of Humphrey Bogart films, 1946's The Big Sleep, featuring Humphrey Bogart as tough detective Philip Morrow, and Lauren Bacall as the wealthy Vivian Sturwood Rutledge. This film is based on detective writer Raymond Chandler's first and still provocative novel of the same name. But before we get to our movie, I have a very special treat for you detective fans in our audience. After 20 years as a Hollywood scriptwriter, author Les Roberts turned to detective fiction. And soon after that move, Roberts created his Cleveland-based sleuth, Mylon Yakovich, who has entertained reading audiences, particularly here on the North Coast, for over a decade and through 11 novels. Next up for Mylon will be the Irish Sports Pages, due in the summer of 2002. Now, I'm pleased to have Les Roberts here with me now. And as current president of the Crime Writers League, I wanted to chat with him about our films this evening. First of all, Les, would you tell me about the uh, influence that Hemingway, as a writer, uh, has had on you? He was the uh, writer whose novel inspired the first presentation we had tonight. Yes. Uh, I am a writer because of Hemingway. Uh, I used to read him when I was a, a teenager. And uh, he's the one who taught me, he taught all of us writing contemporary fiction today, how to write lean and mean. <laughs> I mean, what he could say in just a very few words was as astonishing. And uh, uh, it, it made me want to do that. Uh, and although To Have and Have Not was certainly not my favorite Hemingway novel. Uh, as a matter of fact, the movie is much better. Uh, but it's still a, a remarkable piece of work. Well, for our next film, we have the uh, masterpiece of Raymond Chandler. Uh, with the big sleep. And how would you compare uh, Chandler to uh, other fiction writers? And how would you compare even your writing uh, to his? I believe that Raymond Chandler was probably one of the best five writers, American writers of the 20th century of any genre. Uh, I, I can't think of anybody who could evoke a time and a place and a mood the way he could and, and do it so brilliantly. Uh, and he certainly was a huge influence on my own work. Uh, I, I wouldn't begin to compare myself to him, but if we can compare our two detectives, uh, I think that uh, uh, Philip Marlowe was uh, uh, very much the lone knight, uh, very much the, the, the paladin, the, the samurai, the ronin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I think that Milan Yakovich um, because he lived and grew up in Cleveland and he has friends here and he has family here and children and an ex-wife, uh, that he has much more of a life than uh, Marlowe did. But that makes Marlowe just that more interesting and mysterious. I, uh, when I finished reading all the Marlowe novels, I desperately wanted some more so I could find out more about him and what makes him tick. Now, you've lived on the West Coast for many years, yes. and that, of course, was the uh, setting for so many of the stories and the uh, novels by both, you know, Hammett and uh, Chandler. Yes. And I was just curious, is there anything particular about the setting here on the North Coast that contributes uh, to your writing? Well, uh, the Cleveland area is very different from Los Angeles in many, many ways. What Los Angeles is all about is permeated and was even 50, 60 years ago by the film industry and by the glamour and the kind of dream world, the la-la land uh, <laughs> that they live in. And I think Cleveland is just the opposite of that for me. It's a very real town. It's a very gritty town. Uh, the, the, the people who live in Cleveland uh, are real people. And I think that uh, uh, readers from all over the country, all over the rest of the country, can better identify with Cleveland and its values than they can with Los Angeles and its uh, uh, kind of sick, uh, twisted world. I, I think that the, uh, the very ethnicity, the ethnic diversity of Cleveland has really uh, lifted my work out of the water. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what's your take on the impact of the decades following World War II? How would you say that the, these 
decades have impacted on detective fiction as a genre? I think that before the 60s, let's say, uh, that the detectives, the, especially the private eyes, the two that, that we're seeing Bogart do, Sam Spade and Philip Marlowe, and uh, uh, John D. McDonald's Travis McGee and Ross McDonald's Lou Archer, uh, were more crime-solving machines. They really didn't have... Uh, a, an inner life, and we didn't know that much about them. Uh, starting in the 60s, that began to change. We began to get looks inside our detectives. But I, I think that uh, what we do now is even more important because we write about what is righteous, what is just, what is... We write about the good guys. Well, hey, you should know because you are a good guy. Thank so you. listen, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really my, I appreciate my, it. My pleasure. You know, I was amazed at the scope of the interesting life Chandler led. Born in Chicago, a divorce caused Chandler to be taken to England, where he grew up and attended college. He attended school on the continent and later worked as a newspaper man. In his early 20s, Chandler returns to the United States and settles in the Los Angeles area. During World War II, he enlisted in the Canadian Expeditionary Force. And like writing legend William Faulkner, who helped craft the final screenplay to The Big Sleep, Chandler trained in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Chandler held various jobs while he worked on his writing, with several of his stories appearing in a leading detective magazine in the early 1930s. Finally, in 1939, he succeeds in having The Big Sleep, his first novel, published. It's interesting to note how The Big Sleep was, in fact, his third novel brought to the screen. His novel, Farewell, My Lovely, appeared as The Falcon Takes Over in 1942. Chandler soon became involved with screenwriting, and he's credited for his work on the screenplays for the classic film noir thrillers Devil Indemnity of 1944 and Blue Dahlia in 1946, the same year as tonight's presentation. Bogey was not the only actor to play the character Philip Marlowe. Dick Paul in the 1940s, James Garner in the late 1960s, Elliot Gould and Robert Mitchum in the 1970s all created their own interpretations of Chandler's tough detective. But I don't think any of these actors played opposite his new bride. And that Bogey was able to do with Bacall cast as the rich and somewhat less than truthful Vivian. The success of the somewhat steamy dialogue between Bogey and Bacall in To Have and Have Not was not ignored by the studio bosses. And the dialogue between them in The Big Sleep is still noteworthy for its provocative character. There are some interesting character actors who make significant appearances in this film. Do look out for a rather young Dorothy Malone, who plays an interesting role as a clerk at a bookstore. Malone will be remembered by film fans for her Academy Award performance a decade after tonight's film in Written on the Wind. Veteran cowboy star from Republic Pictures Bob Steele appears as Canino tonight. His career in motion pictures lasted 53 years. And some of our viewers may remember him from his run as Trooper Duffy in the old F Troop series on television. Elijah Cook Jr. appears in our film as Harry Jones this evening. Now I'll have more to say about him when I return to introduce our final presentation, The Maltese Falcon, just before midnight. What an amazing career he enjoyed. And you will see him now with Bogey in both The Big Sleep and later with Bogey in The Maltese Falcon. So get ready to enjoy one of the finest Raymond Chandler detective mysteries ever brought to the screen as we join Bogey and Bacall, supported by Dorothy Malone, Bob Steele, and Elijah Cook in Howard Hawke's version of The Big Sleep. <laughs> 